Okay. Uh, now to refresh our memory. And so at some time in the past, we we mentioned the extended processing sequence, which stated in front of you now. We have the data format, surveying information and field geometry, trace editing and balancing, static corrections, deconvolution, filtering in the FKX domain, deep move out, correction, and the pre-stack partial migration, zero offset, post stack migration algorithm and this one is discussed in the main sequence and then conversion from time to depth which is modeling or transferring our data our model into geologic model and finally we will have pre-stack migration but for today of course we, 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 we don't have the ability or the time to cover all this. Of course, we have, luckily, we have static correction. Now it's uh, away. We are going to uh, speak about data formats, surveying information and field geometry, and trace editing and balancing. Next week, inshallah, we are going to cover this in uh, Tuesday lecture, I hope. So, we hear about data format, uh, not in seismic only, but in, in many uh, applications. For, for example, for audio files, you, you, know, you know you have MP3, MP4, you have WAV uh, files, AU uh, files, and so on. All these are formats used for storing and retrieval of uh, audio uh, data. So we need also data format to deal with seismic data. Here we have in seismic for, uh, exper uh, experiment we have large amount of seismic data. In present day activity, we have hundreds of geophones layout, and we have number of shots. Each geophone with, say, 100 or 200 samples per second uh, recording. This result in vast and large amount of data. So we need to have data format to handle this large amount of data. To put everything tidy and to have these uh, things easy to retrieve for further action. Uh, for example, in, in our home or in the, on your room, you have your belongings. You, you, you should put everything in place so that if you need something, you can bring it easily. And also, if you have many things, you have to, to find something to store these things on the available space. So here we speak about, as a result of large amount of seismic data, this data should be stored for computer usage using certain formats. These formats must be space efficient. We have to have the, the, the size of the file to be reduced, small size. Okay. The space efficiency here means to use less disk space. The standardization, which is another point of interest, means its definition is constant and available and thus can be used and can be read on any computer machine. 
And this point, the letter one, is important for data exchange. Suppose I am Halliburton and another one Schlumberger chair. And now we have data for say for Schlumberger and want to 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 provide this data to other company. If I don't know the format of this data, it's useless for myself. If I give you a file of data without defining the format you are going to use, so it will be difficult for you for you to play back. Suppose I'm having camera and I, 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 I shot uh, some photos or videos, but store in, in, in rare format, format that's not used by most of the machines. So if I provide this file to you, you will find difficulty to deal with this video. So the data should be standard and luckily this is the case. Because we have standard format, this standard format can be used and can be distributed. This standard format results in writing in many computer routines that can be implemented in any computer package for seismic data processing, which result in easy, easy of retrieving data from this data format. As a result of effort provided by the Society of Exploration Geophysicists, uh, American uh, Society, they come up from the early days with two types of data formats. And you, you'll, you'll, you'll realize the name of the format is after the, uh, the association itself. So we have SEGE or SEGY format and there is another one that we are going to, to see which is SEGE D format. So we have two standard formats and this format is used and is well known and accepted by oil and gas uh, community. Uh, of course in the early days Maybe before you, you were born, in 1990, I, uh, I, I, I bought a floppy disk. The floppy disk was of double density. Uh, the capacity of the floppy disk was 700 kilobytes. And it was very advanced at, at that time. Now, of course, we have gigabytes, not megabytes, gigabytes, and also we have today, we speak about terabytes. I remember also the XT computer, IBM one in my institute. It, was, it, it has no hard disk, and the operating system was the, the floppy disk uh, itself. So at that time, the storing media was the magnetic tape. Do you uh, have any idea about the magnetic tape? Do you see old science fiction uh, movies with mainframe computers and some real, big real uh, moving uh, uh, around? Yes, this is called the magnetic tape. And the magnetic tape And the magnetic tape at earlier time was uh, used for storing data in analog format. So we have another classification that's not covered, but we, we have to, to get idea about it. We have two types of storing data. We have analog format and digital format.
in in analog format the the data is stored as magnetic signal or magnetic pulse on the magnetic tape as is without conversion into digits so it seems like all pictures all photos if you have some old photos for your parents or your uh, grandparents it was uh, analog you you got the shot and go to the studio and the studio is uh, processing the material to produce the, the photo the photo on paper and this is called analog format also all recording like movies like uh, songs and so all were on analog format no digital format involved but afterward we moved to digital formats when computer become more feasible and we have revolution in computer science we have revolution in application of computer so we need to move from analog format to digital format and that we, we, we covered uh, earlier was that was called analog to digital converter so analog means the original data while the digital is converted through the analog to digital converter including and alias filter and so on are you follow, following me is clear is there anybody having any problem okay CGI format is one way it is uh, uh, sorry is well documented and standardized uh, that all processing packages can use it stream as input of course these packages like Bromax like Betrel, like other uh, like uh, Kingdom like all these uh, packages have also some local format inter interior internal format but in general all you can use to importing uh, to import SGY, SEGY format and exporting also SEGY format SEGY now can be stored on other media than magnetic tape it was originally designed for magnetic tapes but now it can be stored on optical disk it can be stored on CDs it can be stored or even in hard, on hard disk and any other media and even floppy disk is the size is small so as we discussed earlier we have two types of SEG format we have SEG D format and SEG Y format so SEG D format this format is usually used in data acquisition stage so SEG format is used in field and its lifetime starts from recording the data until the data comes to the data processing unit this is the lifetime of the SEG D format why we are using SEG D format what is what is so special in SEG format uh, SEG D format we, we use in uh, field acquisition the SEG D format is used for that acquisition why because it supports multiplexing and demultiplexing multiplexing and demultiplexing is a way of storing the data in multiplexing data are stored in the manner that the first samples 
from all traces are stored first, all traces, and then the second sample, and then the third sample, and so on, until all samples are stored. It's something that may look like compressing files. You know, you know there is, there is something called archiving or file compression. If, if the data, if I have a folder with large number of files and with high or large space, I will use WinRAR or 7Z or, or any compression to compress these data into folder, into uh, file, and then I use this uh, the same software for uncompressing the data. So it seems pretty like this. It's that we are saving the data in a manner like the original uh, acquisition of the data. We are compressing the space. We are reducing the space. And then when we, uh, we, when we want to, uh, to apply or to work with this data, we, we have to go for demultiplexing, like unzipping, demultiplexing to extract the data and the bot and the putting the data back in <coughs> sorry uh, in a trace format. Okay. Another benefit from using SEG. D format is that it can support many words lengths, which make it useful in making reduction in data space on storage devices. So, does any anyone here know what 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 does mean uh, words lens? Yes. You can, you, we can use our imagination. Imagine something. Yes, yes, oi. Right longer. Like? Microsoft? Yes. Yes. Any any other attempts? We need uh, volunteers. As you know, uh, after 30 minutes, we should refresh our ourselves. So we need some volunteers to refresh. Yes, yes, Sharaw. Do you have an idea? No. Shafiq? Okay, Ashraf? Uh, okay, s tell, tell me, answer. It's the amount of the words that you can put in there. And it's like, uh, you can put many words there. Uh, specifically, you, 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 you should answer this uh, question. Uh, uh, the world, you, now you have uh, in, on, in earlier days the window, window 3. You know, I'm too old. I, 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 I use DOS and window 3 and then windows 95. And I'm getting old to now I'm using uh, windows 8, when 1. The word was 16 bit. 16 bit. Sixteen bits. Sixteen bits. 
You studied uh, computer programming? Okay. So I have 16 compartment here. That's why I'm telling, I, I told you, Ashraf, that you should answer this question. So, here, using the binary system, we have, starting from uh, 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 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, until 2 to the power 15. Okay. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, until 15. So, if all this compartment, if all these bits are 1, this represents the biggest number I can put in this world. Okay? Okay or not? Okay. So, for example, as I remember, the eight bits is two thirty-two uh, thousand uh, something two hundred thirty-two thousand two hundred eighty-six. I think this is the maximum integer number to that can be put in eight uh, bits. So sixteen is bigger. So uh, thirty-two. It's bigger. I can store much larger number. For uh, 64, the present day, I can store much, much larger number. Yes, the word. This, for, for computer, this is a word. This is a word length. So when when I have longer word, I have higher information that can be in 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 uh, uh, stored in single word. Otherwise, I have to cut the numbers and cut the word, the number, into, for example, in scientific uh, notation, to cut into the 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 flow part like something like that say so i am cutting the the number into two uh, parts and make algorithm to put this data in more words, which results in taking more space. So if I have longer word, it will provide me less computational uh, effort and also lower or reduced desk space. Is it clear? Are we refreshed? Yes. Some looks like blackout. Now we move to Sage Y format. Okay, it is a standard format for oil and gas industry. Data exchange are done using SEGY format. The format consists of mainly of two main blocks: the header blocks and trace data blocks. And each block is then subdivided into two blocks. The header is subdivided into two blocks. One uh, uh, that can be transferred easily into ASCII, 
which, in which we store the metadata. And the other, the binary, you know, of course, the, the binary format and ASCII format. The other one is a binary, and in the binary format, important data is stored, like the line number, the sampling rate, and the number of samples, and so on. This ribbon show us the uh, setup of SIGY format. Now we have 3,200 bytes, which is called real header in ABCDIC format, and it is uh, so so much similar to ASCII. So it's like text. And the, the, the information given in this text format uh, is metafile. Metafiles mean the, the location, the name of the location, the name of the project, the client, the, and all other metadata, information, informational data about this uh, project. It's, yes. Uh, it's like uh, like data that is needed for definition, but it's not used in, 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 in analysis or processing. Okay? Because we are not going to use this, uh, this data. It's, uh, as I told you, it's an ASCII format, and you can, excuse me? Uh, you can view it uh, uh, on any uh, uh, viewer, ask a viewer like Notepad or, or, or so. This one is important, it's 400 bytes, important information, read, and there is also something important, it's called the format of reading. The how to, to put the variable uh, to refresh you. you. You know we have integers, okay? And we have floats or real variable, and we have characters, and we have also strings. And each of these variables, the integers means we, there is no decimal places. There is no decimal point or decimal places. If you if you want if you put 3.5 and define this as an integer, the machine will read only three. The point five is, is totally ignored. The floats is responsible for the fractions, numbers with fractions. Character is single character, single like A, like B, like single letter, like A, like B, like C, and also sometimes we may use uh, numbers as characters. So you may use, uh, say, five, not as number. If you define this field as character, you cannot take this variable and multiply by something. You will get error because this variable is defined as character. String is an array of characters. It's more than one, uh, one character, one letter, and this will uh, le uh, words you can put uh, words here. So each variable should be defined, the length of this variable, the type of, of this variable, whether is it, it is integer, for example, the sample rate is integer number. The number of samples is an integer number. 
okay? But some other parameters is not uh, integer number. And then after the trace, we enter into, uh, sorry, after the header, which ends here, so it's 3,600 bytes. We have 240 bytes for trace header. This represents the, the, the parameters for this specific uh, trace. And then the data of this trace and so on. Th this one trace and this another trace and so on, till the end of the file. So we have header at the beginning and then we have traces that can be used to determine to 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 retrieve to store the data the second point is the surveying information and field geometry the next step is to put the surveying information into SEGY format. So, surveying currently in, uh, named uh, uh, geometrics. This is the new name for surveying. In surveying, we are working on defining the location coordinates of points, directions, elevation, and so on. So, along with the experiment a geophysicist there is surveyor this surveyor is represented uh, is uh, responsible for defining the locations of the geophones the location of the shots the elevation of each geophone the depth of the hole if we are using uh, if we are using uh, uh, dynamite you know we have to drill hole and put the uh, the charge and detonate it. So all this information must be provided by the surveyor. And it's very important. Why? Because if we have bad location or coordinates of the geophones, then all our analysis will be useless or meaningful. Uh, no, sorry, meaningless. Yes. Okay, meaningless, not meaningful. Okay, so this uh, process may may take up to six months. Yes, up to six months working and entering the data, especially for uh, large surveying or large seismic experiment. So this data. Is stored where? Do you have any idea where this data is stored in the CGY volume? Yes, this data is stored in the in the header part in the binary uh, header and the part and the headers for the traces uh, themselves. Yes? In the header of the traces. The, 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 the trace, we have header and it. Okay? Now for the last but not least part, like Mohammed Khairul Ridwan, he went down. <laughs> Last but not least, yes. Which is trace editing and amplitude balance, balancing. So this part is related to the data quality and data view. For trace editing, it happens that some shots are bad. Some problem occur. Uh, these shots or this firing is not good. So 
the data obtained should be ignored. Uh, also, maybe some problem occur at certain geophones or certain traces. Maybe we, we discover that the, the geophone is not working. Maybe we discover some problem in the cable. Maybe something happened uh, now for, say, for land or even for marine. Uh, maybe we have, uh, like, we, 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 conduct, we conducted seismic experiment at Lankawi uh, in last, this March, last March. And when we were spreading our uh, array in a rice field, uh, uh, accidentally one of the, of the cows uh, ran uh, very quickly and uh, uh, hit the, the, the cable. We, we, we were afraid the cable would be uh, torn or cut due to this. And also we're uh, worrying about the, the cow not to have broken leg or, or something. So some, something may happen during the experiment that maybe uh, somebody who is unaware of what's going on enter into the, into the field, maybe one of the animals or uh, uh, shark fish or something uh, uh, attack the, the huyoi or attack the, 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 the geophones or uh, hydrophones or so. So all this technical and natural problem should, problems should be clearly stated in a log report and this log is, is reviewed when we upload, when we import the data so that traces belonging to this problem should be removed. They are not going to be used anymore. These traces will be removed. This is an example of a surveyor or observer's uh, log is writing everything, commenting about everything in this, what happened in, uh, in this shop, if, if there is some problem. And here is a bad file, he's stating here some uh, bad, bad file, the conditions, everything about the uh, about the experiment is written here. So when we got this SGD, SEGD uh, data volume, we should look at this and remove traces or files with bad data. Otherwise, we'll have big problem and we are not going to have uh, good processing or good modeling uh, at last at the last moment. No, these are some of the files that are, uh, he, he think, due to the, 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 the field observation, there is some problem. So these are bad files that should be removed for each experiment. No, we can't, we can't use for, we can't use this for exploration. But if you want to use for academic with, with no uh, consequences, no problem. But uh, for exploration, it's money talking and money efficient. So you have to, to take care. Okay, Mohammed, we're speaking about last but not least, lending from you. Uh, the last item that we are going to cover today is the amplitude balancing. And this is very important for better viewing of the data and also for correction. As you know, all geophysical tools have corrections. Uh, uh, here we do several algorithms to correct for the loss of energy due to the geometrical spreading and absorption. Why? Because reflection coefficient travels more or larger 
distances. So, as we know, Earth looks, uh, acts like low bus filter, so it attenuates, it absorbs energy, and thus the amplitude we, are, we have will be less than, than uh, the one without absorption or without geometrical spreading. I believe all of us remember what geometrical spreading means. Are we? Or not? <laughs> so, Ayman, do you, do you know what is uh, Azrai? Okay, let's look for the, the sorry, to the head of the Azim. So, Atiqa, what is the question again? <laughs> what is the geometrical spreading? <laughs> spreading. Uh, array. Array? Yes, and uh, then uh, Sharawi. Okay. Ta uh, let me say, you, you, you studied wave, waves in, in physics? Wave physics? Do, do you remember something called wave front? So, geometrical spreading means that as time passes, the wave front surface increases. Okay? If you remember the, the example of the lake and you you throw stone into the lake, then the wave front is increasing. So, suppose that you don't have any other loss of energy other than geometrical spreading. It means that the energy that was distributed in a small surface is the same energy that are distributed on larger surface, okay? The same energy, if the, 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 the energy is one, after time t it's one, after time two seconds it's also one. But what is the difference? The energy difference is the energy uh, density, which means energy divided by the surface will become less. Okay? So, we will observe a certain, if I am observing, here are the wave France. So, suppose we have this ray. We have observation of energy density at this point. Observation of energy density at this point, and finally at this point. Okay? So, the energy density at small surface is high. But as we move away, it's less. If we make graph, it looks something like this. which means that the energy due to geometrical spreading generally attenuates uh, geometrical spreading attenuates energy by a factor a factor of r by divided by r squared the amplitude not the energy so the amplitude is attenuated by 
a factor of 1 divided by i. But the energy is by 1 divided by r squared. Yes, the energy density. Okay. No, of course, in real in real world, the energy is absorbed. Yes, but now we we assume we have no absorption, meaning that the energy is constant. The law of conservation of of energy that the energy does not a uh, does not uh, consume or. Uh, 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 created from uh, nothing. I, I'm, I, the, 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 the sentence itself, I'm trying to, to translate from Arabic to, uh, to English. I'm not, not remembering the law itself. But we, we cannot get energy from nothing, and the energy itself is not consumed, does not vanish. Rather, it's, it, it, it's the energy, a change from one phase to other phase. But the energy, according to the law of conservation of energy, remains the, the same amount or same quantity. So we assume we have no other loss. And the other loss is absorption maybe uh, in, in the form of heat, in the form of chemical reaction, for many, many forms where the energy, is the mechanical energy, the vibration energy is transformed, uh, converted into other types and for me, for mechanical observation, it's absorbing and I'm observing lower amplitude. So, my intention is to make function that compensate for this loss. Okay? So, my intention is to make function to compensate for this loss so the Giffon at this point, the amplitude is compensated by uh, 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 multiplying by certain factor, maybe by, by R itself to, to become all having the same energy. Okay? This is called geometrical spreading. When the material is not elastic, is not perfectly elastic, some uh, flow occur when energy, when mechanical energy pass through. This flow result in absorption of energy into other types of energy like heat and sometimes in uh, chemical, uh, for example, radon uh, gas may be emitted from some uh, places. So the first point, the physical point, I'm correcting for the amplitude for absorption and geometrical spreading. And please, this is the second time I'm speaking about geometrical spreading. Do not forget, because this is one of the basics. Like the, like the strike and dip. This, if you are, you are going to work with waves. So this, one of the basics. You, you should not forget. So we have other type of corrections for amplitude. The first one, due to trace problems. In this case, maybe the geophone or number of geophones are uh, having less sensitivity, or maybe, maybe have bad coupling and coupling is, is meaning bad contact. So if they, they, have, they have bad contact, then the, the response, the sensitivity will be low. What should I do at this point? I should observe the energy at all other traces and try to compensate by up multiplying by the average uh, trace energy uh, difference between this trace and other traces. This point we can uh, correct for geophone uh, problem. 
The other one is a short problem. Sometimes the shooting itself, there is uh, some problem. Sometimes I have uh, some geological conditions like uh, uh, like uh, say fracturing uh, fracturing will cause the energy to to di to propagate in certain uh, direction better than other direction and so it will affect how the energy from the shots arrive to traces okay so I have also to do something like the one above by studying the mode of energy uh, propagation from all the sources and try to correct for this problem with that source. Finally, and last but not least, is the AGC, which is the automatic gain control. In automatic gain control, we are applying various gain. At shallower depths, or at, at less time, uh, at earlier time, the amplitude is by default is high, is higher than the deeper one. So I'm making windows for amplitude for gain with the time that the gain increase with time, so that deeper reflectors are uh, becoming more visible uh, to me. Okay. Thank you.